y'all excited? Yeah. You know, last week y'all was all in it. Woo. Those that were here. I'm excited because today is my last day. <laughs> Praise God. We, are, we will have our pastor back next Sunday. Praise Jesus. Amen. And so I'm just going to open up with prayer. Father God, we just thank you. We continue to give you the praise, the glory, and all of the honor today, God. We thank you, God, for waking us up in our right mind with the activity of all of our limbs today, oh God. We thank you, God, that you saw fit to allow us to be here in this place, God. We thank you, God. We glorify you, God. We don't ever want to enter in, God, not giving you praise, not giving you thanksgiving, God, but worshiping you, God. We don't ever want to forget, God, that without you, God, we are nothing, oh God. We don't ever want to forget, oh God, that you're standing right with us, God, that we're not going back by ourselves, God, but you're going with us, God. We thank you, God. We give you the praise, all of the honor, and all of the glory today, God. You're the same God today, yesterday, and forevermore, and we worship you. God, we magnify you in this place, oh God. We honor you, God. Oh God, we thank God for your presence being in this place, oh God, even before we arrived, God, the atmosphere was set on today, God. When we step foot up in this place, oh God, you are already taking up residency up in this place, oh God. And we glorify you and we worship you today, oh God. Because we know that everything we have concern of, God, we know that it is already considered by you, God, to be taken care of. We know that you are the God that supply all of our needs and we worship you for that. Oh, God, we worship you, God. We thank you, our Father. We thank you, God. You are our Father. You are the God that supplies all of our needs, oh, God. You are a God that delivers us and set us free, God, from the spirit of bondage, God. And we worship you and we thank you, God. In Jesus' name, God, we even pray that as I begin to decrease, God, you will increase on the inside of me, God. We prophesy that the word will fall on good ground and blinded eyes will be opened, God, and lives will shift and transform to the way you desire them to be transformed, God. There are people in this Shabbatiah that are sitting in this place today, God, that are lost and confused, God. But I prophesy that as the word of God begin to proceed, oh God, that it will be a light in the midst of their dark situation, God. We prophesy, God, that their spirit lands will be open, God, to receive from heaven on today, God. God, we thank you, we worship you, we glorify you, and we magnify you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, 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 amen. amen. I thank God for prayer. I love to pray. Prayer is communication with God and any assignment that you have on your life will be revealed when you open up your mouth in prayer. When people cannot pray, it tells me that they are not ready to occupy whatever position they are trying to occupy because we have to occupy it with the voice of God. We have to know what God is saying in order to lead his people. And the only way for us to know that is through the realm of prayer. Prayer opens up puddles. It gives us the advantage, not just over the enemy but over the world we can speak into we can speak those things that be not as though they are this is what gives us the advantage when we go out into the world amen yeah. and so I love prayer prayer sometimes just take me all the way there and so I'm just going to give a recap on last week we uh, talked about obedience being better than sacrifice but we talked about alignment we talked about being in alignment. A lot of times the enemy comes to distract us and move us out of the alignment into, and, and as it relates to the assignment that God has for our lives. God gives each and every last one of us an assignment. And the enemy's job is, well, I don't like to say his job because nobody employed him to do this. He takes it upon himself because he was disobedient. He wants you to be disobedient. You know, so nobody employed him. So he decides that I want to I wanna get as many people as I can to walk in disobedience. So I'm going to distract them to get them out of their place of alignment with God. If you're not in alignment with God, you're walking in disobedience, and we're going to see that today. And the only thing that, that, that the Bible says that faith is what pleases God, but when you're walking in faith, faith allows you to see and stay in proper alignment. It allows you to stay in proper alignment. So I was tripping when, um, when Pastor said he gonna, <laughs> he gonna go he going to go from Joshua. You know that's where I'm coming from. Joshua. 
the book of Joshua. I thank God for um, obedience and really listening to him And uh, because I was coming from somewhere else and he, sh he shipped me throughout the week. I was studying for something else. Um, I have to go speak Saturday, so I was studying for that. And um, the Lord, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to give a recap of alignment of what I talked about on last week just to make sure that everybody got what it means to be in proper alignment as it relates to the car. And when you're out of proper alignment, sometimes you like that, that steering wheel when you start going all over the place and can't nobody control you. You start, you don't have a sense of direction. And so when you stay in proper alignment, you, you're focused on the direction. You're focus forward on where you're going and where you're headed. And so I was just going to give a recap of that so that everybody can really understand the importance of staying in alignment with God. But God shifted me and had me to go to Joshua. Chapter 6. Joshua chapter 6. <clears throat> now we know in chapter 6 it's talking about Jericho. Anytime you're getting ready to enter into a new season in your life, it's going to bring some opposition. Anytime you enter into a new season, anytime God sends you to a new place, it's going to be some form of opposition because the enemy does not want you to stop and inherit everything that God wants you to have. This is a spiritual battle. So God fights our battle for us. So it's a battle that we don't even have to fight if we remain in alignment. If we stay in position, if we stay in alignment with the assignment that God has for our lives, that we stay focused, we don't even have to fight. It's a spiritual battle. Sometimes you don't even have to know what's going on spiritually. Just continue to pray and know that God is fighting the battle for you. And so they're getting ready to go um, to the promised land. We know that Moses was supposed to take the children of Israel into the promised land. However, because of the leaders that he chose came back with a negative report, they couldn't go in. They came back with a negative report, um, scaring the people, doing all kind of stuff, you know, um, trying to infect everybody else, you know, with, with their um, fear of entering into this promised land. And so God said, listen, this generation can't go, so I'm going to allow the next generation to go. And so before you go into the land of Canaan, before you go into the promised land, there's a place you got to go through. And in that place is going to be some opposition, which is Jericho. Okay, there's going to be some opposition there. Some of us, we want to um, transition from homes. We want to leave from, a, 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 from an apartment to a house. Some of us want to leave certain regions. But whenever God gives you an assignment and say, I want you to go here, you got to understand that before you get to the promised land, you may have to go through a dry land that's going to, that's going to make you encounter some opposition. And during that opposition, that's the time where God is making you. He's making you stronger. He's making you wiser because he's building you and preparing you and positioning you for, for the promised land. Okay? So you got it. So it's important that before you get to the promised land, you go through every necessary step that God sent you through. And every time we get to a place of opposition, this is when fear comes and snatches us out of alignment. Opposition causes us to get out of alignment because of the spirit of fear. If I can get you afraid in this place, then you will lose hope as it relates to entering into the promised land. So I got to scare you. I got to make you feel like you defeated. I got to make you feel like nobody is with you and everybody is against you. I have to make you feel like that God didn't left you. When he said, listen, I never leave you nor forsake you. But when you're in a dry place, when you're in a place of opposition, it feels like God didn't left. Every time I see a place of, when God takes me through a dry place or dry season, and I'm in this time where there's opposition, and sometimes I'm not really hearing God like I used to hear God, it lets me know that somewhere along the line I grew up. I grew up because when you have little children, you are there in their faith. You don't let them out of your sight. You can't, you can't trust every little thing that they do because they're kids. But when they reach a certain age, they can walk to the store without you. You know that I didn't instilled enough in them during a particular process in their life where they got it. They got a little bit of wisdom. They got enough sense to go to the store, get what I told them to get it, come on back. That's how it is in God. Sometimes we get to a place in our lives with God where we call upon him and all of a sudden we feel like, well, God ain't heard me. God ain't saying nothing. Well, why you ain't moved? Where you at? 
But God is saying, I'm trying to come another way. I'm trying to mature you. Last time, y'all used to deal with you in dreams and vision, but this time I want you to hear me a little stronger. This time I want you to see me in a different way. So sometimes he changes the way he, he deals with us because he wants to grow us up, and, and, and it's a sign that we've grown. And so the children of Israel, now um, that they're, getting, they're going to the promised land, and the first place they have to encounter is Jericho, and, and it's a battle. They got to go in and fight them because they're coming to take back. They're coming to take back what belongs to them. How many of us, we, the enemy has stole some things from us? Y'all just going to let them punk y'all? No, y'all going to go back and y'all going to snatch back everything that he stole from y'all. Y'all going to go back and just snatch it back. Y'all not going to just let them have it. So they had to encounter a battle. Okay, so um, Joshua uh, the title of this message is called Obedience Will Keep You in Proper Alignment. Obedience will keep you in alignment. It'll stop you from going from place to place. It'll even calm down that hunger. Sometimes we have a hunger and a desire and it'll be so strong, we allow anybody to feed us anything. But when you're in the right place at the right time, God can fill you up to the point that you ain't even hungry no more because you didn't had enough of where you've been. When you're in the right place, when you allow God to feed you the right nutrition, when you allow him to feed you the right food that you need for your journey, you will be okay. You won't still be sitting up there thinking you're dying of starvation. And when people are out of alignment, they feel like they're dying of starvation. They feel like nobody's paying them no attention. They feel like they're in the wrong place at the wrong time. But if you get in alignment and you stay there, God will feed the thing that you're hungering for. So now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, see, I have given Jericho into your hand. It's king and the mighty men of valor. Now, let me stop right there. He said, I have given Jericho into your hand. I have given Jericho into your hand. That means that anytime you're getting ready to go into the battle, you got to go in knowing you got a word. You standing on the word. The enemy comes to get you out of alignment with the word. But you got to remember that God said, listen, none of Samuel's word fell to the ground. So if God said, listen, I sent my word and it's going to accomplish that which I sent it to accomplish, then the word came down. I got to stand on what God said. And God said, I'm giving it to you. I have given it to you. It's yours. You can already take it. Can't nobody take it away from you. Can't nobody snatch it out your hand. It's already yours. Go in with the mindset that God said he gave me this land. So anybody that try to come in and illegally build on the land that God has given me is out of order. And all because I'm in alignment, God going to back me up. God is going to back me up because I'm in alignment. I can't worry about who not in alignment. I just got to make sure I get in alignment. I got to make sure I stay in alignment. If you don't want to get in alignment, that's you and God. Yeah. I'm not going to miss what God has for me. I'm not going to do it. Because God said, listen, I've already given it to you. But what's, it's contingent upon you staying in alignment. You shall march around the city, all you men of war. You shall go around the city once. This you shall do for six days. Now, anytime you're going into the promised land, there's always going to be some instructions given to you. I want you to remember that. The first thing is this. You're going to enter in and you may have to encounter some obstacles. You may have to encounter going into a battle before you get to the promised land. But before you get there, God is going to send a word to you, letting you know that he's with you as you're going through whatever process, whatever, whether it's an illness, whether it's financial, whether it's relationships. Some of us are going through in our relationship status. But you got to know that if God be for me, then who can be against me? You got to know that if God connected me and put me in this country, Covenant, covenant relationship, then God is the one that is going to be the glue to keep us connected together. You have to know that. And so the next thing God said, listen, I'm going to do is not only are you going into the battle, but you're going to go in with some instructions. Everybody say obedience. You got to follow the instructions. If you don't follow the instructions, this is why I'm talking about obedience. The enemy comes to distract us to get us out of alignment with the assignment by doing what? Getting us not to follow the instructions. If I can get you not, it, there was a man in the book of Luke, 
when Jesus spat on the ground, made clay, and he put it on his eyes and he told him to go wash. He gave him instructions. Now, what if he would have cut corners and said, listen, I better take this off my eyes now. And then when I get there, I wash. He wouldn't have been saying. The only reason his eyes was open was because he followed instructions. And so sometimes when we're entering into a new season, not sometimes, but when we're entering into a new season, God is going to tell you, listen, 